our topic of study is magnesium sulfate very important the pharmacology for step one and uh, then the management of uh, severe eclampsia and uh, uh, other things for step two and step three now first let us uh, review the basics for magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate it is the second most plentiful cation in the intracellular fluids it is very essential for the activity of many enzyme systems and it plays an important role with regard to neurochemical transmission and muscular excitability and you see uh, the indications basically you need to remember for example intravenous magnesium sulfate is indicated for immediate control of life-threatening convulsions in conditions like preeclampsia and eclampsia in pregnancy and treatment of acute nephritis in children that is important treatment of acute nephritis in children magnesium sulfate is used for that purpose and hypomagnesemia hypomagnesemia I mean magnesium deficiency occurs and you see magnesium deficiency sometimes cause signs similar to tetany you see tetany occurs due to hypocalcemia and uh, magnesium deficiency also occurs sometimes and it masquerades as tetany so in those conditions you need to give magnesium sulfate to the patient and the other thing is uh, whenever the patient is on total parenteral nutrition you should make sure that he is also getting adequate amounts of magnesium sulfate now another very important use for magnesium sulfate is uh, in uterine tetany and uh, I mean as a tocolytic to relax the myometrium we use magnesium sulfate there is a uh, nephidipine also is very used but the most commonly used tocolytic in the United States is magnesium sulfate now how to administer intramuscularly you should give for severe hypomagnesemia it, you should give one to five grams daily in divided doses intravenously one to four grams magnesium sulfate may be given intravenously in 10 to 20 percent solution but with great caution and um, now let me talk about for eclampsia this is very important because magnesium sulfate eclampsia you should remember that like just a conjoined twin they go together and for eclampsia initially one to two grams in 25 percent to 50 percent solution is given intramuscularly subsequently one gram is given every 30 minutes until relief is obtained now the most important thing you need to remember is whenever you use magnesium sulfate after each injection you should monitor blood pressure very important for step two and step three why because magnesium sulfate causes sharp reductions in blood pressure and um, now let me talk about side effects of magnesium sulfate it basically causes flushing sweating and uh, as I mentioned earlier it causes sharp lowering in blood pressure and hypothermia stopper and ultimately respiratory depression that is the most serious side effect when you use magnesium sulfate indiscriminately it causes respiratory depression now warnings and precautions magnesium sulfate should be given very cautiously in the presence of uh, serious impairment of renal function because most of the magnesium sulfate is excreted through kidneys so remember this point whenever the patient has renal function impairments you should use magnesium sulfate very cautiously the principal hazard in parental magnesium therapy is the production of abnormally high levels of magnesium in the plasma and these uh, abnormally high levels of magnesium in the plasma they cause flushing sweating hypotension circulatory collapse of and depression of uh, cardiac and uh, central nervous system function the most immediate danger to life as I said earlier is respiratory depression respiratory depression that is very important to remember now what is the antidote for magnesium sulfate toxicity calcium gluconate or calcium gluceptate so you should always make sure that 
a preparation of calcium gluconate or calcium gluceptate is at your hand whenever you are treating a patient with magnesium sulfate. Now coming to precautions, when, uh, as I said earlier, magnesium sulfate causes respiratory depression through its uh, depressive effects on central nervous system. That's why whenever you use uh, drugs that act on uh, central nervous system, drugs like barbiturates, narcotics and other hypnotics, when you use them in conjunction with magnesium sulfate, you should be careful. Now contraindications. Are there any contraindications for magnesium sulfate? Yes, there are. Myocardial damage and heart block. Whenever the patient has myocardial damage or heart block, that is a contraindication for magnesium sulfate. Because magnesium sulfate, as I said, is a very important Magnesium is a very important cation in excitability of uh, muscles and that adversely affects the heart. Now for step two and step three, I want to mention one very important point that is whenever you use magnesium sulfate as a tocolytic to increase the relaxation in the myocardium, my, uh, sorry, myometrium, what are you going to use? The most commonly used tocolytic is, of course, magnesium sulfate in North America. But oral nifedipine can also be used. But a recent study conducted by Obstetrics and Gynecology, American uh, Association of uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology, found out that uh, magnesium sulfate is uh, more effective than nifedipine in preventing preterm delivery for 48 hours but nifedipine is linked with fewer maternal adverse effects. So whenever it comes to adverse effects, nifedipine is better. But whenever it comes to efficacy, magnesium sulfate is better among the two. So magnesium sulfate requires intravenous administration, whereas oral uh, nifedipine requires just oral administration. And uh, magnesium sulfate, as I mentioned earlier, has potential for war medication with the serious maternal adverse effects like respiratory depression. And it may be associated with adverse neonatal effects also. Now, let us consider some other important pearly points in this uh, uh, regard. Intravenous magnesium sulfate, a common tocolytic agent used to suspend uterine contractions and delay preterm delivery can have adverse effects on both the mother and the neonate. But you see the pearls of wisdom for these two things is in women in preterm labor, treatment with intravenous magnesium sulfate versus oral nephedipine. You have to make a choice. But intravenous magnesium sulfate is more effective in preventing delivery for 48 hours with uterine quiescence. But the two treatments are similar in terms of delivery within 48 hours, gestational age of delivery, but before 32 and 70, 37 weeks and uh, recurrent preterm labor. In those regards, both magnesium sulfate and oral nephedipine, they have equal efficacy. So you need to remember those most important points and wish you all the best.